All right. Last week I told you if there was a need for a video, I'd do one. Well, here I am on vacation uh, in Dubrovnik, Croatia. For you Game of Thrones fans, you certainly know the location behind me, the Walk of Atonement, and the Shame Stairs. Seemed like the appropriate location to do a video to talk about Mayor Brandon Johnson and how shameful, <laughs> literally disgusting and pathetic his administration has been. And now uh, it's no surprise to really the rank and file officers, that's for sure, that he has somebody that absolutely hates the police, wants to defund the police, and says vile things about the police. She's only doing and saying the things that he can't do publicly. That's why she's in his administration. If he had an ounce of decency or accountability, she'd be gone literally ask for a resignation or fire her. No ands, ifs, or buts. I don't expect that to happen because Brandon absolutely has the people he wants in place to do the dirty work that he can't do. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of them are incompetent, like Ms. Kennedy, um, along with people uh, who are in charge of city finances, apparently, because how are we a billion dollars in deficit going into this new fiscal year? You 31 aldermen, literally, who voted to stop a vote to go to the people on ballot about Chicago being a sanctuary city, you are responsible. You aldermen who continually rubber stamp this knucklehead's efforts to just ram this city into the ground repeatedly, you are responsible. We all of a sudden came up with hundreds of millions of dollars, but we're facing a budget shortfall for migrants that weren't born here, that legally don't belong here, and there are so many other needs in this city, but you found hundreds of millions of dollars for them, and now we're facing a billion dollar shortfall. Because of a Me Too clause, the Chicago supervisors, sergeants, lieutenants, and captains, along with CFD Local 2, deserve and are guaranteed another 2.5% raise on top of the 25 they already gotten because of the contract that Lodge 7 was able to secure. It's guaranteed money, but yet not only are you now facing a deficit, you're going to continue to now hold that money hostage for those bargaining members who protect this city every single day instead of giving them the full 5% in January like you should have. Here we are now almost three quarters of the way through this year and they're still waiting for that or 2.5% and bargaining has gone nowhere when it comes to a new successor collective bargaining agreement. I could go on and on and on about how incompetent this mayor is. Oh, and not to mention, they're facing a budget shortfall of a billion dollars, right? I don't even think that takes into account the court ordered 150 plus million dollar judgment against the city for police overtime for the Fair Labor Standards Act. Um, FLSA payment is due. It has been due. This administration has ignored it. Every financial wizard in the city government, and I use that term lightly, um, has basically ignored it and refused to pay our members the money that they are due for work performed years ago already, almost in some cases a decade ago. You talk about deadbeats. It's no mystery. This guy can't pay his water bill. Why would he pay any other bills? Um, he's a disgrace. He needs to go. I could tell you one of the things we're going to do, the recall petition fell short, you know, trying to get that many signatures in a short period of time. I applaud Dan Bowler for getting that off the ground and putting that conversation on the table. But we will be in Springfield and we will be pushing for lawmakers like LaShawn Ford, who has introduced legislation uh, for state statute to have an ability to recall the Chicago mayor to have that conversation again and see if we can get that done in the veto session. Something needs to be done to address the level of incompetence of somebody who just smiles pretty, says big things, and tells everybody what they want to hear, but has no plan, literally is bankrupting this city every single day. Uh, for those of you working, obviously, Mexican Independence Weekend, be safe. Um, I can tell you the city reached out to us trying to, according to uh, George Rommel's arbitration change New Year's Eve as one of the expected deployments for overtime and drop that one in exchange for Mexican Independence Weekend. Um, we've clearly said, unless you were willing to put in writing that should Mexican Independence get switched, that New Year's Eve would then be double time if you cancel time off. They refused to put that in writing, so it was pretty much dead on arrival. But um, it's just one ridiculous thing after another. And we complained about David Brown 
and Eric Carter and the overtime and unnecessary ridiculous deployments. Well, here we go again. Um, it certainly seems like Chief Hine thinks that just deploying hundreds of officers and ruining their family life and their mental health is okay. Lastly, it is still September and it is still Suicide Awareness Month. We tragically lost a member at the beginning of this month who felt there was no other way out um, because of employment issues and other legal issues he was facing. Um, please, there are plenty of helping hands available. Reach out, grab one, pick up the phone, make a call. Answer a call if you get one. The life you save, you may never know, but we have to take care of each other because there are far too many people who are not taking care of us. Brandon Johnson, Kennedy Barley needs to, Barkley needs to resign effective immediately. Andrea Kirsten needs to be gone effective immediately. Where is the city council holding Andrea Kirsten responsible for now the little retaliation and whistleblower lawsuits that are sure to come out of COPA? Um, we've told you for two plus years now that we have documented proof, which were the basis for the lawsuit, on what she was doing since she got that job. Kudos to our supporters in city council who absolutely railed against Andrea Kirsten getting this job and shame on the ones who said she was fit to do this job because she is not. Everybody have a safe weekend. I'll see you next week back at home. All right, I'm glad I remembered this before I posted the video um, that I started this morning. HR 82 in Washington, D.C. is the windfall elimination bill. It is currently being held up in the House. There is what they call a discharge petition. The discharge petition forces it to go to the floor for a vote. There are still 47 more co-sponsors for that discharge petition to be forced to go to the floor for a vote. Currently, there are only two reps in Illinois who have signed on to that discharge petition, Mike Boss and Chewy Garcia. So I'm encouraging everybody watching this, especially our members, Call, contact, email every member that has any representation inside the city limits to urge them to sign that discharge petition before Wednesday. Uh, you know, this is the short notice we get sometimes, but again, the deadline for this discharge petition to be entertained is Wednesday. So we need kind of to mobilize every rep in the state, whether you live in, whether they're in Chicago or not, doesn't matter contact every state rep by email or telephone, blow up their phone services, and let's make sure this at least gets called for a vote and force them to say, they, to do what they said they were going to do. Uh, with that, I hope you enjoyed the little background view at the end there. Have a good weekend. Everybody working that crazy uh, Independence weekend, be safe.